Welcome to The Unlist. Today we are talking about freshies. And when I say freshies, I mean the online fragrance community's colloquial term for any fragrance that is fresh and clean in general. It's sort of a term we throw around. So when we say freshy, we mean everything from aquatics and ozonics to citrus florals, floral musks, old fashioned uh, aromatic citrus, sheep ribs, I'm talking about uh, traditional eau de cologne fragrances, all of those are effectively freshies. Whether they're more naturalistic in nature or more abstract and chemical, if it generally smells fresh and clean or if it was designed to smell fresh and clean, even if by today's standards it may not if it's older, it still counts as a freshie for a sake of argument to define our terms. And this is a seasonal video, so I'm talking about my favorite freshies in summer of 2023. The fragrances I tend to just wail on, like I said, beat it like it owes me money. I'm going to wear, wear it until it wished I didn't wear it no more. Like, oh, please stop. Don't wear me again. Oh, no, I'm going to wear you more. Ha, 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 ha. You know. Although, full disclosure, I am the kind of person that wears fresh fragrances basically all year round because I don't have long protracted summers up here in the Pacific Northwest. I don't have particularly intense summers either, unless we have uh, a raging forest fire nearby that sends a bunch of smoke across and that traps in the heat. Like last year, we had a really bad summer that actually lasted way into the fall. Most of our fall was actually in the 80s, which is crazy. We thought that we were dying, that it was the apocalypse because we were literally in early October and it was still 85 degrees outside in early October. And we were just like, like that. We just couldn't escape it, you know? It was like every day was Groundhog Day and Groundhog Day was way back in August and we just couldn't escape August, you know, we couldn't get away. But that's like some global warming doom and gloom stuff and it's not normal. It's not, it may become the normal eventually and then, you know, we're all gonna hate life up here more than we already do, but that's typically historically not the normal. So historically, I don't have long intense summers. So I have to wear my freshies wherever I can find time or else they just sit in my collection and they collect dust. I could just live off of fougeres and stuff like that all year round because typically we're not climbing into the 35C or 100 plus territory, not very often. Now, that out of the way, there are specific freshies that I don't usually bring myself to wear until the summer. So I have the ones that I kind of wear all year round, you know, and they, they, they're on my little uh, quick, I have a quick wrap shelf. So they're on that shelf. And then I have the ones that are in my main collection behind the glass. And those I don't reach for usually until it properly is summer. And those are the ones that I'm going to call my seasonal favorites for 2023. The ones that you go on base notes to catch me wearing like just year round. Even though I wear those a lot, those are typically just dumb reaches. I wouldn't call them uh, my favorites, unless you're a qualifying favorite as the thing you reach for the most. Sometimes I just go, that'll do, and I grab it, right? I don't always put a ton of thought behind my choices, and I think some of y'all can agree with me there. So therefore, let's continue. My favorite freshies of 2023. The fragrances that I can expect to be wearing a little bit more heavily in the summer months. So the tail end of June, all of July, most of August. And assuming we don't have another forest fire and assuming that the Pacific Northwest doesn't turn into the mouth of hell again until like November, assuming that doesn't happen again, then I would say mid-August, end of August. So from now until about August is the prime time for these fragrances I'm about to name. So getting started. I'll kick it off with the bottle I have with me today, which I broke out for its first use of the year. And it's a big freaking honka chonka bottle. It's the big bazoinka doink bottle, okay? So it's, it's the one that's like, you know, makes me look like I'm small. It looks like a gag bottle, it's so big. And this is my jumbo sized bottle of Versace Man Eau Fresh, released in 2006 by Versace. Now, this is actually a flanker. There is a Versace Man that came out in 2003. 
And that fragrance is not a freshie. Not at all. That fragrance, which is sadly discontinued, which is hilarious when they discontinue the pillar, but they keep the flanker. It's like they did with uh, Dracar Noir, where they got rid of Dracar, but they kept Dracar Noir. Now people don't even realize there was a normal Dracar. It's kind of silly. I don't know why they do that. That doesn't make sense to me. If they're going to discontinue the pillar, they should rename the flanker something else. Just take Versace Man off the bottle and just call it uh, Oh Fresh or something, right? Don't, don't tie it into the original line when the original line no longer exists. It seems kind of dumb. So if you're out there, Versace, and you're listening to me, I think you should change the bottle. There's no point in having this bottle anymore if you don't have the original one, okay? It's making people go, well, hey, where's the non -o fresh one at? Where's just the Versace man at? And then you're like, ha ha, we don't have it anymore. You can't get it. So that was a purple bottle, by the way. And it's a very weird fragrance. But it's not weird if you grew up in the 2000s. If you were like me and uh, 2003 when that came out, you were like 22, 23 years old. So you were like, okay. In the context of what was going on in men's fashion at the time, that fragrance makes sense. I won't say any more about it. This video is not about that fragrance, but it makes sense. However, it was a concept that didn't age very well. So within less than 10 years, so 2013, it was gone from shelves. Satin discounters languished for a long time. And then eventually it got discontinued, or maybe it was discontinued for a long time, but they just had bottles hanging around. And then finally prices started to shoot up and it became, you know, the hype. Because whenever something is commonly available, nobody wants it. And suddenly when you can't have it anymore, that's when everyone wants it. Oh my God, it's going away. You better get it now. Ah, right? So this one, however, is an entirely different ball game. This isn't even in the same stadium as the original. Like I said, it puzzles me why it's in this bottle. But what you get here, and why this is one of my favorite freshies, and why it's on my 2023 unlist. So see, I'm doing a proper unlist this time. Probably my only second actual unlist I've done in this entire channel's history. So it just shows you how irreverent I sort of am. I'm always taking the piss on this whole video format thing. But this is on my uh, official Freshies Unlist for 2023 because it's a very interesting combination of concepts. It's an aquatic in theory, but in execution, it's not really because it has much more to do with narrowly. It has much more to do with cypress notes. It has much more to do with cedarwood it has much more to do with a very compressed sort of woody floral profile that sort of defies what a aquatic is supposed to be the only time this is actually aquatic is in the very opening part of it when you get those uh zippy like sort of uh dryer sheet style uh aldehyde notes the kind of aldehydes that typically open aquatic fragrances they have that sort of bright dryer sheets vibe uh, but beyond that, the usual aquatic players, the hydromyrcinol, no. Galaxolide, no, not really. You know, uh, Kalone, 1951, nope, no Kalone at all, absolutely not. So all of the star players of the aquatic genre are like not here. They are absent in this fragrance. So it's like, okay, is it really an aquatic then? I mean, they say it is. <laughs> the marketing calls it one. But when you smell it, you're like, no, this is just more like an abstract, uh, abstract modern twist. Well, modern for 2006, so it's almost 20 years ago, but it's an abstract, somewhat modern uh, interpretation of a traditional cologne, in, in my opinion. It's just a, a Mediterranean style uh, orange blossom based cologne as seen through the eyes of today's perfumers versus someone trying to capture the essence of say 4711 and do it with modern materials which would be more of like a Penhaligon's Castile or a Bond Eau de New York or one of those uh, New Glare Cologne all of those traditional cologne fragrances with modern materials this isn't that this is the cologne concept the cologne concept reinterpreted with modern eyes so I like it a lot 
and most people don't tend to go that deep on it. You won't hear anyone else talk this deeply about this fragrance besides me. So either I'm a total mad lad, right? I'm off my rocker, or maybe I have a point to make. Who knows? I'll let you decide. But in the meantime, I'm going to be wearing this. So that's one of them. Rest of them, I don't have the bottles with me because, of course, I don't. I don't go lugging 15,000 bottles with me when I do these videos, guys. I mean, the whole point of the unlist, right, is not to have all this uh, flexing and gloating and swag and stuff in the background, you know, and uh, royalty-free music and boom, 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 and all this flashy graphics and intro, outro stuff. And I'm just not about that life, you know. You're, there are too many YouTubers out there doing that. I want the bare bones, okay? And if you don't like the bare bones, then I'm sorry, okay? This is like Dick's Burgers. You get the burger, you get the patty on the bun, and you get your mustard and ketchup and your cheese, and that's all you get. Dick's Burgers won't hook you up with lettuce, tomato, pickles, and all that stuff. You can buy a deluxe burger, and they'll give you some lettuce and pickles and maybe some uh, relish or something on it, but that's all you're going to get. You're not getting nothing else. So that's my presentation. I've got the Dick's Burgers presentation for YouTube going on. So next up on my list is going to be Eau de Rocha Slome from 1993. Why is this one of my favorite freshies for 2023? Why am I going to get so much use out of it? For one, it's another big honka chonkin bottle. I don't have it with me, but it's this massive bottle like this. And Eau de Rocha Slome is basically a masculine take on the original Eau de Rocha which was released in 1970 and was a spiritual relaunching of Eau de Roche. So Eau de Roche was a Edmund Rudnitska fragrance, okay, Com composed for Rochas. Well, uh, Nicholas Mamunas was hired once he became sort of head perfumer for Rochas. He was hired to kind of re-envision the Eau de Roche. So I guess they're trying to bring the formula in-house, right? So they don't have to keep paying uh, Roditska and Art at Parfum, which is his laboratory, pay them royalties for oil or whatever. They could just do it themselves. So they created Eau de Rochas, which was a very basic, uh, heady owned style, citrus, uh, floral sheep, right, with an oak moss base, okay? It's very nice. Technically, it was unisex, but as most of you know, in that time period, a lot of those unisex fragrances went one way or the other because they weren't called unisex, they were called shared. They were shared fragrances. And a lot of those shared fragrances, including Eau de Lancome, Eau de Batu, Eau de Rochas, Eau de Campagne, uh, Eau Libre, uh, Ho Hong, all of those things back then that were shared fragrances, they were ultimately one way or the other. It just the market determined. So in the case of Eau de Rochas, it became feminine because that's who bought it. The ladies bought it. Men's version came out in the 90s, and it was also perfumed by uh, Nicholas Mamounas. And I also think, uh, I think he also had uh, one of the Gaveris. I think, I think it was Max Gaveri, because it wasn't Clement. He was still a kid then. And uh, could be wrong on that. Okay, don't quote me. Could be wrong on that. But they created an updated modern take on Eau de Rochas, but they made it more masculine. So they plucked a lot of the floral notes out of it. So what you're really getting with uh, Eau de Rochas Loam is you're getting the citrus chypre, the oak moss, uh, the labdanum, okay, the bergamot, but the bergamot is sort of standing naked. It's almost, uh, it's almost stark, okay, it's very stark. It's not the Earl Grey tea kind of bergamot, so it's not going to be that sort of little bit floral. It's the very uh, oily sort of citrus oil like, like you're wringing the fruit like you're squeezing it over a glass it's like that like you're putting it in something as a beverage and you're stirring it into something it's that kind of juicy bergamot and then you also get some verbena in there you get some lemon verbena in there and then on top of that you get once again you get cedar notes which I like my cedar wood notes and then there's a couple other things going on in there that are really nice too and uh, herbs there's a little bit of an herb interplay and it's just a very dry citrusy it almost feels like limoncello for the skin so if you like limoncello you like putting out your drinks it's kind of like that but for the skin very nice one of my favorites now moving on 
one of my other uh, really big freshy fragrances that I intend to wear a lot of in the coming months. This one is sort of not as uh, not as seen by the fragrance community as a freshie, but honestly, the way I wear it and the way I use it, I think it is. And that fragrance is Lauder for Men, released in 1985. Most people don't see that as a freshie. They see it as a powerhouse. Oh, it's a powerhouse. But I'm like, not really. It's, it is a heavily, uh, it is a heavily aromatic fragrance. It does have oak moss, so that's patchouli, okay. Um, it has a carnation note in the heart but it also has very big, green, sharp, bright, citrus, uh, galbanum notes in it, okay? It has these very big, punchy, green, fresh notes. The rest of it, you know, the carnation, the geranium, the rose, the oak moss, the patchouli, they are actually just sort of background players. It's just the problem is, most people who wear this fragrance are afraid to wear it in the summer, so they never get to know the side of it that I know. It's like there is this very bright summery side to Lauder for Men. If you just wear it outside in the heat, you'll know, you'll find out, but people don't, so they don't know. Now, is it the freshest fragrance on planet Earth? Definitely not, okay? It's not gonna be fresher than say this, but the point is, with a light application, because it is it is a strong fragrance, guys. It's very strong. But with a light application, a judicious amount, let the heat and the humidity of the day and the sunlight do the magic, it becomes a very nice, fresh fragrance. And I'm gonna dare you guys out there in fragrance land who have bottles of Lauder for Men by Estee Lauder, I'm gonna dare you to go out and wear that. You know, wear it in the summer. Maybe not 15 sprays of it, okay, but wear it in the summer. And then you come back and you tell me, was I right? Is it really a freshie? Or am I just, you know, am I just full of shit? <laughs> and I'm trying to make you punk yourself in public. I mean, I wouldn't try and do that, but I want you to tell me how you feel about it. So, okay. Last but not least, all right, we've gone through some 90s, we've gone through some 80s, okay and 2000s another freshie that I'm going to wear a lot of in the summer this is probably the most expensive bottle on this list but it is Creed Royal Water from 1997 and I have the old frosted bottles with the fire hose sprayer so I don't know if my experience is going to line up the same as your experience but I've smelled the newer bottles not in recent memory but I smell the newer ones. They still smell good to me. I can't tell you what the newest ones do because Creed is always messing with stuff, you know. They do it on purpose to create batch hysteria. It's part of their selling model. But I have the old dog bottles from the 90s. So mine, they are a very, very interesting interplay between dry rose, gin, you know, a very salty, sort of desiccated ambergris. Not super halitosis, not very breathy. Creed typically doesn't do the real breathy stuff. That's more a Middle Eastern thing, you know, to do the breathy stuff. But very salty, desiccated sort of vibe with the ambergris over the gin, over the dry rose, over the bergamot. So we get lots of juniper, lots of bergamot, the dry rose, the herbs. The, it's fantastic, guys, it's fantastic. Uh, it's probably one of the, the best uh, freshies that I can come up with that's not an aquatic. And you noticed I didn't really name any true aquatics on this list. Maybe this one, but, you know, didn't really name any true aquatics here. Because, like I said, I think outside of the box with my freshie favorites. And I do wear some more uh, uh, generic aquatics, like it's out of the shower. So... I do wear Aspen, okay? I do wear cool water, but those are out of the shower fragrances. If I'm gonna sit in a fragrance all day, it's not gonna be one of those. So, all right, guys, that's been the Unlist Freshies Summer 2023. 
Tell me what your favorites are in the comments below or have a conversation with me on Instagram or somewhere and we can get rapid about them. Have a good one.